Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about the Sabaj A20A. It's an amp, but it's got some secrets. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Sabaj. You know what's awesome? Axe throwing in a controlled, safe environment that's supervised. Do you know what's not awesome? Losing your hair prematurely. Did you know that three out of four men start to lose their hair prematurely by the time they're 30? That's right. Some people can look good with receding hairlines or a shaved head, but those people are actors in Hollywood or television, like Jason Statham or Jason Statham. For the rest of us, it's not a good look. Have you ever seen a comb over? A comb over is where you take hair that's actually growing out of a alive part of your scalp and then you grow it out really long and then you lay it over the dead, lifeless part of your scalp. Have you ever seen a good one? I haven't. Actually, when you see someone with a comb over and a big gust of wind happens, that's when a lot of excitement starts. You don't want to look, but you still have to stare. And if someone's sitting next to you, you oftentimes lean over and say, Hey, look at that comb over. Man, it's bad. Or, I bet that guy with the comb over wishes it wasn't so windy outside. Because now everyone can see his comb over. Well, that all ends today, my friends, because Keeps exists. Keeps.com. Get it? Keep your hair Keeps is a company that sends you to your door a personalized hair treatment program from real hair doctors that went to real hair doctor medical school. You go online, you fill out some information, and they create a program tailored just for you. It's an individual program for your individual hair loss needs. So do it now. Go to Keeps.com and get started. You can use the discount code CheapAudioMan for 50% off your first order. Keeps.com slash CheapAudioMan. Save time. Save money. Save your shattered self-confidence from your receding hairline. Remember, some people can look good with a receding hairline, like Jason Statham. Otherwise, you won't. Keeps.com slash CheapAudioMan for 50% off your first order. Do it. Sorry about that. I snuck a little uh, sponsored content into this video. But the Sabaj is kind of funny at times. The Sabaj A20A, what is it? Well, it's a power amplifier, a class D power amplifier that uses a new Infineon chip. Usually all the chips were Infineon uh, 12070 chips. This one, however, uses the Infineon MA5332M. 50, the power ratings are a little ambiguous on this amplifier, but it's not going to keep me from telling you what it says. This amplifier can be bridged, and reportedly you can get a bunch of power out of it. And in my situation, there was a plenty of power to go around. In stereo, it says, at a THD of 0 0.04, no, 0 0.004 percent, it tells one, us, the customer, that you can get 170 watts times two into four ohms and 90 watts times two into eight ohms, okay? Bridged, it says we can get 350 watts times one, obviously, into four to eight ohms. Now, I don't know how that works out. I did not look up the spec sheet for the Infineon MA5332M chip. Let's see if I got that right. I don't know if that matters. I haven't seen any other reviews that say what the actual power rating is. There's plenty of power to go around. Now I had these hooked up to the Sony SSCS5, which is a six ohm speaker. I'll put it to you this way. This thing would have fried the Sony's in stereo mode. In mono mode, it would completely obliterate these speakers. So regardless of what the true power is, there is plenty on tap here with the Sabaj A20A. On the front, 
It's very, very simple. However, we should talk about how it looks, okay? I did the DAC, which is the A20D before, and I raved about how it looks. It sounds great as well, but I love the way these components look. And when they're all stacked up together, it's hard not to like them if you're into that kind of look. It reminds me of the Macintosh 4100. I think that's a receiver. And some of the old school silver amplifiers with little handles on them. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. I love the way this thing looks. Love it. On the front, there is a comically large power lever here. This goes up and down. One simple LED. When you first turn this on, it's red. And when it's, I guess, happy with itself, it turns blue. And then there's the volume knob. So when using this amplifier in bridge mode, the volume knob fundamentally becomes a balance knob because there's no balance control on this amp when using it in stereo. There's no balance control on the DAC. So you get what you get. When you are bridged, you can control balance by simply adjusting the volume of said channel. What's on the back? On the back. This thing gets a little bit complicated, but once you get the mode that you want and you just leave it alone, it's gonna be fine. Okay, from left to right, we have actually a low pass filter. I was hoping this was going to be a high pass filter because it would be pretty cool if you could use this to do a little bit of bass management on your front speakers. However, it is not a high pass filter. It is a low pass filter meant for a passive subwoofer because there's so many of those around but if you want to build your own subwoofer you can power it with this amplifier so on top you have the low pass variable filter from 70 hertz up to 200 hertz underneath that is a series of dip switches on the left you have line or bt for whatever reason you can do bluetooth on this amplifier which i don't really think you need to have because you have Bluetooth in most of the DACs, especially the DAC that is meant to go on this stack. It has very good Bluetooth. However, if you want the option to Bluetooth to one channel, if it's bridged, anyway, I'll get off it. It has Bluetooth, so if you want to use that feature, you can. The left dip switch goes from line to Bluetooth, so leave it in line. The middle dip switch is for the variable low pass filter. If you have it all the way up, it means the low pass filter is not engaged. So you're really only gonna use this feature if you're running a passive subwoofer. To the right of that is a dip switch that controls whether or not this amplifier is in stereo or bridge mode. Next to that, you have your RCA inputs. Next to that, you have a switch between RCA or XLR. You can still bridge this with RCA. But it's a dip but it's a dip switch right there i don't mind the dip switches really because once you get this set up chances are you're probably going to leave it alone xlr input and then your bluetooth antenna and then next to that are some fairly decent binding posts this also has an internal switch mode power supply which is reported to be pretty good iec connection then underneath that there's a diagram that shows the dip switches there's a little bit loss in translation here because BTL means balanced and then it's kind of confusing because BT is Bluetooth. Anyway, even I figured out how to put the dip switches in their correct position. So I imagine that you and all of you are probably smarter than I am can figure it out as well. From a sound characteristic standpoint, in stereo mode, this sounded better than most Class D amplifiers. However, there is still some harshness on top. What is starting to happen though is the bottom end is starting to be filled out. I am not familiar. This is the first time I've ever heard this Infineon chip. Very familiar with the 12070. This sounds much better than the 12070. And there's no baked in EQ. So even with zero EQ, I was getting a very pleasant sound signature. Full on the bottom detailed in the mids top end again a little bit harsh on certain tracks on the sony's when i put the elac debut reference on which are just a little bit warmer speaker that was a little bit more palatable 
but it was still there if I really leaned in. For most people in most situations, you're probably not gonna hear that unless you have some pretty Ford speakers. I do not think this amplifier would pair well with Klipsch speakers. I think it's just gonna be way too harsh on top. Not saying Klipsch speakers are bad at all. It's just that this sound signature has a little bit of a forward lean in some upper mid-range and percussion areas. However, it gets better when you bridge it. When this amplifier is bridged, there's even more oomph on the bottom end. And they really brought the Sonys to life. The ELAC debut reference was mm, visceral in your chest. So this amplifier still has some characteristics that I don't really love on the top. The bottom end, even in stereo mode, is better than most. And then when you put it in bridge mode, it gets even better. It's really a fun time. Here's some of the tracks that there's some issues on. Sun Sunday Bloody Sunday by U2. It was pretty harsh on top. I don't really think that song's recorded all that well, but it was pretty uncomfortable with the with the percussion and the top end of his vocals on the Sonys. It got better with the debut reference, but it was still there. Conversely though, on certain tracks, it's going to sound incredible. Alice in Chains, the one you know. It's a newer song off of a newer record that, does, that doesn't have Lane Staley as the lead singer. Even the, the new lead singer is fantastic. Really, really good presentation of that song even on the Sonys. This amplifier is going to be track dependent. It's also gonna be speaker dependent. I think you can almost completely eliminate some of the harshness on the top end, depending upon the speaker that you have, or you can get an EQ. This amplifier comes in at $200, which is a very affordable stereo amplifier and a very, very affordable kind of monoblock bridged amplifier. And it sounds very good. I think Class D is moving in the right direction. I think this chip is very good. And I'd love to see this implemented into somewhat of a integrated DAC amp with some baked in EQ settings, because I think with a tweak of some DSP, this could be a nearly flawless Class D amplifier because the clarity is there. The sound stage is there. Image, that's one thing I forgot to say. Imaging is really locked in with this amplifier even in stereo mode, but when bridged, it gets even better. I was pleasantly surprised just how good this amplifier put things in space in the bridged mode. So the question is, do you have the right speakers for this amp? Do you even care that there's a little bit of steeliness on the top? And does it fit your application? On the Amazon listing, they had an Atmos use case scenario with a processor that had balanced outputs. I think that's a great use case application because these things are small. The Schkit Locius almost matches these for width. It is just a little bit wider. But if you put the Locius on the bottom and then stack these on top, that's a system that's going to please anybody. At $400 for a pair of these. The matching DAC is $420. So for $820, you have fundamentally a ton of power, separate components, a really good DAC, really good Bluetooth, and a really appealing form factor. And you also have a very capable headphone amp. It's pretty good. If you don't need the bridge mode, you can start off with just one of these and that would be 620. Depends on what you want though, because there are a lot of integrated amplifiers out there from the likes of Emotiva, Yamaha, they're gonna give you a DAC traditional form factor, and maybe a sound signature that is more to your liking. As it is though, I think the A20A, the 2022 version, I think there's a lot to like here. Once you start adding it up though, I don't know how big of a value it will be for you. Now you don't need to use the matching DAC. You can use whatever DAC you want. If you don't have a DAC that has volume control though, the volume control has to be done manually on here, so there's no remote control. This really is meant to go with the matching DAC. But again, any balanced DAC with volume control is going to be able to use these just fine. From a pure sonic perspective, I like it. I love the way it looks. I think it's moving in the right direction. If I was using this for my personal rig, 
I probably would put the Lokius on it. There is yet another amplifier in this line that uses, I think, ice power modules, and it's more powerful than the A5. I love what Sabaj is doing with this whole line. I love the way it looks. It's getting there. It is getting there. It is almost perfect. A little bit of harshness on the top end. Mitigate that with speaker choices. You may not mind it at all. Or you could put an EQ on it. This sounds pretty similar to the Crown amplifier. I think this is more balanced than the Crown amplifier, the DriveCore series, and doesn't need as much EQ. To get it perfect for me, needs a little bit of EQ on the top. Probably around 6,000 hertz-ish, 8,000 hertz, just bringing it down a bit. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheapaudio. Every Sunday night, we have patron-only Zooms. We also have a patron-only Facebook group, Discord server. You can use the links in the description. This will be linked in the description. Those are affiliate links for the most part, which means if you click and you buy, I get a commission, but it doesn't cost you anymore. You can also use the thanks button underneath the video next to the share button. You can buy me a cup of coffee or two, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through your new Savage A20A bridgeable amplifier. And fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.